In the previous video, you've seen us buying this big piece of land and working on it. We spent a lot of time building, renovating and clearing the land. But there's one thing we never mentioned and it's probably the most risky thing we ever did. Welcome to a new Project Camp update. So about two years ago, we bought this big piece of land around 10 hectares. And by far the most scary thing when buying this piece of land was that we bought it with a hole in the middle. Let me explain. See, this is the map of the land and this is our land. And this big circle in the middle is not ours. And this circle is actually pretty big, one hectare, and it's very close to base camp. So here we have base camp and the workspace. Here is the road and already here is the neighbor land. So all around here are the edges. You can see it with the poles, uh, really marked very well. And this is quite scary, buying a land that close by neighbor land and really all surrounded with it because maybe the neighbor decided to start living here. So then they have to drive to project camp every day, which is kind of awkward. Maybe they start a stinky chicken farm, so it would smell here all the time, or maybe decide to build a noisy factory. And it would really be in the middle, like the heart of project camp. So it seemed like a very stupid thing to buy a land like that, uh, not owning the middle land. But so far it's actually growing quite well, so after a year or something when we came here, we met the neighbor and we also found this well on his land and we asked him, could we use that for water on our land? And he said, yeah, sure. Which was a good point that we started uh, meeting each other and we saw they're quite friendly, nice people that uh, are happy that we're here. And I think that's kind of how we bought this land, uh, just hoping that the neighbor would be okay. I would say it's been very risky because you never know what neighbor you're gonna end up with and you have a lot of doom scenarios out there of people fighting with their neighbor. But I think deep down inside, we fully trusted on hoping people would find their way out of this. So now we made an agreement that was the next step uh, that we would actually buy the land, which is cool. Still haven't officially bought it, but uh, I guess we both agree, we would trust each other. So now we can start using the land but we actually haven't really properly seen it yet. So first up is we're gonna discover it with a drone. We are here and the neighborland is here. It's really in the middle of our land. If you have a closer look, it seems like some really cool things are there. Like some ruins on the land, looks pretty cool from above. And some other hidden structures covered in bushes here, not sure what those are and some sort of small room or tiny brick house. And with it seems another granite room next to it. Overall, it looks like it has a lot of spiky bushes and vegetation, green areas and full of brambles. So yeah, that's all we can see for now with a drone. So let's have a look on the ground and explore those structures. Curious to see what they look like from close by. So here's the border. So we're gonna have a look what's there. Likes a lot of mimosas around here. Ooh, little open field. Maybe here's the well. The neighbors always talked about the overflow of our well should be somewhere here. Wet socks. So I think this is the overflow of our well that we use and as you can see the water is still flowing into the reservoir there. Almost empty but still wet in here. So I don't know what this is. Okay, first up, the well overflow and water reservoir. Wow. 
Well, big open grass field with a lot of brambles. Hmm. This is how I made my way to the field. Big eucalyptus tree, pine tree, uh, some ruin there. Lots of spiky bushes. Climbed up to the stone ruin. Cool old ruin. Something burned there. Looks a bit collapsed. Many more native trees around here, less mimosas, which is good. Some roof tiles. Another sort of ruin. Now we are here under the trees. Big old pine trees. Another ruin. Looks very low. A uh, wall there, but hard to access. On the border with our land, the poles. This is really right at the edge. And then another big old pine tree with actual pine cones. It's a shame it burned down. It must have been nice to have this big tree. But not anymore. Here I found the burned pine tree. Making my way back to the ruin. Right back on the big field, we're gonna actually see that side. Here's some sort of a weird, that big open field here with a lot of eucalyptus actually and pine. Here's the path I made to the weird eucalyptus field. Little grass patch, random. It's quite a big height difference here. Kind of cool. A 
another little grass patch. Many nice flowering bushes. This is the location of the smaller field. Very peaceful here. Okay, back to our land here. We are back on the big field. Cool big rock. Another burn tree. So here's a big rock, and there you can see the big rock from our land. It's cool. And here's our big grass patch. It's cool land. And here's the big rock. Nice adventure exploring this hectare. Hope you got a rough idea of this place. So today we're gonna brush cut on the land. We're gonna clean up the bushes and the vegetation and see what's underneath all of the rocks, the ruins. The well, kind of curious to see what's all there. So, time to chop some bushes. So here we are, in the open space of the land. And I think there's a wall all the way there, but I'm not sure. So I thought maybe I'll start with that one to open it up and seeing what's underneath. A lot of brambles on top, so this could already take me a day to just brush cut it. So this oak tree was fully covered with brambles and now it fell down uh, because of the weight it couldn't hold itself so now we're going to put up a rope to make sure it's up again and it can grow. We got a oak mimosa and a hammer so we're going to give it some extra support so it can stand up and become a big old tree. So 
so the wall is now cleared up still quite rough with all sand and brambles and stuff mm -hmm. but that's for later at least we can now see what is actually there it's pretty cool it's nice to have a terrace in the land here you can see the chopped field from above here's the wall that makes a terrace probably used to grow vegetables and this is the oak tree hope it will survive This is the sound of defeating spiky bushes. Sounds good when they're all dry and squeezed. So here's the area we just chopped and I realized actually the well should just be here. Uh, a lot of vegetation there, but I think it's very green because there's a lot of water there. So I think we're gonna chop here and see if we can find that well. So it looks like uh, it's here. Let me show you. Little stairs there. Here's some basin, the overflow from the well. And then there's the pathway. So I think cleaning up a bit more and seeing uh, what's all there. So it's now cleaned up. Let me show you some things we found. Pretty cool old wall here. Then the overflow from the well, the water comes out here. Now it's a bit covered with stuff. Here's some old steps they made from stones. I think this did, but maybe later. I'm not sure what for. And then the water flows here. It gets more wet. And here's a big basin where the water, where the water stays. Looks pretty cool. So here's the chop road through the spiky bushes and there you can see the basin of the well overflow. So next we're gonna do this grass patch in the middle because the grass is getting pretty high and some brambles start to grow. So we're gonna chop this all smooth. And then we go to the ruin. So the field is now all chopped and now we're going to continue there to the ruin, last part. Big rock in front, even roses. Cleaning up a bit more here.
So everything is now clean, cleaned up around the ruin. Now we can have a look and explore a little bit. So we can now fully walk around the ruin here. Nice big old granite rocks. Over here I wanted to chop it but it all had these blossoming roses so I could not. I could not. Maybe later. I think it used to be the hinge of the door. A lot of roof tiles on the floor. Probably because the fire burned the wooden beams with the roof tiles on top. So the wood is gone and the roof tiles are here. Seems like it was a double floor. Some metal change. I don't know what happened there. Still some traces from the fire, some molten aluminum. A lot of jars and glass. Looks like the ruin itself is built on this big granite stone right here. I guess this is some of the burned roof. Another plate to eat. Some metal door lock with a snail. And another thing. And up here we have a molten raincoat or something hanging. This is very weird. Yeah, something molten fabric. Over here is a big cool flat rock. One of the neighbors actually told us that they used to dry their corn here on this flat rock. So maybe this was also some sort of storage. So yeah, that's the ruin. Pretty nice location with the big rock outside. Seems like a fun project to renovate. So finally we're gonna have a look at the two ruins there. Those are also the ones I didn't really see properly yet because the rest was a bit more accessible, but this is really dense. There's a lot of vegetation here. Wait, let me show you actually. So yeah, and somewhere there or there. Not sure. So we're just gonna start chopping the pathway and hopefully we'll find it. Sorry. All right, so let me show you what we found here. And this ruin is also built on a big granite rock. And the ruin itself is in a bit rougher condition. It's more like clay and smaller stones. Looks like there was a small window there. And there's another one there, a door. So it looks like there was a double floor. If we go out. There's another little room here. Uh, it's very low. I'm not sure if there's just a lot of stuff here, like roof tiles and stones, or it was just a low room. It's 
small room, bigger room. Well, yeah, so this is one sort of room. And then here's the other building from brick. And it has three of these small rooms. Three cool rooms. Could be three bathrooms. As you can see, it was also built on granite. So maybe it was an older ruin before. And they put bricks on top, what they often do here. Uh, yeah, also here you can see the granite. Well, yeah, this looks like three pretty cool places. So that was, I think, everything to be found on the land for now. Well, good big crack there. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't know what comes after this. So those were the last two ruins on the land. Well, I think that's all you could find. They're still quite hidden from above, but you can actually access pretty well from the bottom. So that's all on the middle land. We have the wall, grass patch, the well, granite ruin, brick ruin, and another ruin. Still more to explore, but for now we know enough. So that's kind of the story of the middle land. And up until now, we still didn't officially buy it, but we're just gonna continue to take it into our plans because we have trust and faith that we will work it out with the neighbor. Um, and this is actually gonna be quite an essential land for Project Com because it's really the center. So the long-term plan would be that we move more the living situation to this land and the current base camp would become more of a workspace area. Uh, you actually can see more of these plans in the research module. And for now, the first next step is we're gonna make an access area that we can bring a brick trailer here and we're gonna build our first level two house. Uh, that's actually gonna be the next video. If you already wanna see that, make sure to support us on Patreon or not and subscribe and you will see it popping up in your YouTube. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.